five years ago, the countries of the world, including all the Mediterranean countries, have uh, committed to establish uh, up to 10% of uh, their waters into uh, areas that are uh, protected and managed appropriately. So since we are now halfway between 2010 and 2020, and uh, because now it's 2015, and uh, we are still very far from the uh, achieving this target. Um, so the um, Barcelona Convention countries have, are, are now seeking guidance uh, in order to achieve this target, and this is the roadmap we are working on today. Il faut exploiter au maximum ces cinq années qui restent pour arriver. Et le rôle des organisations comme le, le RACSPA, c'est de booster les, les pays, les assister pour qu'ils arrivent à atteindre cet objectif. Parce qu'en en fin de compte, ce ne sont pas les organisations internationales qui mettent en œuvre, ce sont les pays. Le rôle des organisations internationales, c'est de les aider, de leur fournir l'appui technique, des fois même financier, pour qu'ils arrivent à atteindre ces objectifs. Le purpose de ce roadmap, oui, exactement, c'est la liste des activités et des mesures qui sont supposées être implémentées par les pays méditerranéens in order to, to achieve this target, to, to, to promote or to enlarge existing protected areas, to establish new protected areas, to define conservation measures in, in areas, not only territorial waters, but also in, in the open seas. Uh, in fact, if you look at, at the maps of marine protected areas of the Mediterranean, you would find that, um, that the open seas are somehow underrepresented. Although there are some, some measures concerning fishery mainly that are in place. The, the, now we have to separate the problem into two parts. Uh, one part is to formally establish uh, the protected areas. But it's not only marine protected areas. It's also areas that are managed in a way that will ensure that the resources are, are used in a sustainable way and uh, so that the uh, biodiversity, marine biodiversity that these areas contain remains uh, you know, in good, uh, in good uh, state. So uh, the first thing is to establish these protected areas. And uh, of course, once you have them established, uh, then you have to be able to manage them properly. So uh, it doesn't take a lot of resources to establish. It's just, you know, you have to do the studies, you have to, uh, uh, you know, put them on a map, you have to pass legislation, you have to, uh, to work with the local communities uh, so that um, they are not, you know, coming from the top, but they are also part of, uh, so there is a lot of also the um, uh, awareness, uh, action, etc. But the establishment is the, is the least of the effort. The big effort is then ensure that the management um, is in place so that then what are the objectives of these areas are going to be fulfilled. The whole issue about the uh, roadmap is not only to achieve but how to achieve it in terms of what are the resources needed, how can you convince decision makers in a language that they can understand, how can you provide incentive to them that marine protected areas, our uh, insurance for the future generation you have resources in terms of marine biodiversity, you have resources of fisheries, for example. You can make use of these resources for other purposes as well, like fisheries, for example, and many, many other things. So it is a communication tool with the decision makers, especially when we go for the next uh, cup in Barcelona Convention. What is really important is that the, uh, all this uh, um, uh, complex of protected areas is uh, financially sustainable and uh, uh, in the world we know that um, protected areas are a huge asset economical asset so uh, the ways have to be found also in the Mediterranean uh, for this to happen uh, and there are many ways to do that but we have to uh, you know increase capacity you have to make uh, uh, and to ensure that the, uh, the governments that are, you know, in fact responsible for this uh, do it in the proper way. I am an academic as a professor of marine environment, but at the same time I work for the government. 
I have been uh, director of nature conservation that deal with all protected areas in Egypt. So I have my own ways of communicating with the decision makers in a way that you speak the same language. You don't talk about marine protected areas in terms of how many species, why they are, no. We talk about marine protected areas in terms of job creation, investment for projects, gender issue, the, the use of resources, the economics of these resources in a way that you can make proper investment based on cost-benefit analysis and things like that. So it is not just an academic affair that you study an issue and leave it at that level. No, you have the kind of people that they are both academic and decision makers in a way that we can work together to achieve the main purpose that we have agreed upon some years ago in 2010. And we are halfway through. So we have to be very, very uh, practical in terms of assessment of our resources, in terms of what have we achieved so far, what are the main gaps in our knowledge, and how can we overcome this in terms of uh, resources